I have been joined on the telephone, thankfully, by Mr. Kweku Ansa Asari. He is a private legal practitioner and then also the former director of the Ghana School of Law. Counsel, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on Key Point, sir. Good morning. Now, do morning. I, I am well, sir. Thank you so much for asking. Now, yeah. w w w what we are faced with now with the majority or the, the MPP leadership in parliament going to the Supreme Court with an ex parte motion which has been granted until the determination of a case before it, staying the execution of the speaker's ruling in declaring some forces vacant in parliament. What are we faced with now? What's the risk of this particular situation? Well, thank you very much. I think, uh, first of all, I need to point out that the Supreme Court did not have jurisdiction. Its jurisdiction was not properly invoked. So, whatever the Supreme Court did yesterday, um, constitutes a novelty. The applicants, the applicants, the Honorable Alexander uh, Appleton Martin, mm -hmm. uh, brought an application against two respondents, that is the Speaker and the Attorney General. None of them was properly set with the protest. In the case of the Speaker, we are told that the Speaker, the Speaker, uh, an attempt was made to set the Speaker through the legal department. That is wrong. You can either serve the speaker himself or normally the clerk of parliament. Never, never the, the legal department. That's the first point. The second point is that nothing has been said so far about whether or not the attorney general, the second respondent, was said. Now, the usual uh, practice is that where an application is brought ex parte and the respondents are not before the court, the court will either have to adjourn or grant the application uh, for a maximum number of 10 days and direct the applicants to bring the respondents by notice. So the, the, the applicant, the Honorable Appeno Martin, you know, would have taken steps to serve the speaker and the attorney general properly. That was not done. And therefore, the procedural lapses render the Supreme Court proceedings a nullity. Now, a more fundamental constitutional point arises. Can the Supreme Court impugn the a decision of Parliament that was taken in the usual course of parliamentary business? The answer is no. The Supreme Court has no such power. What the Supreme Court did yesterday amounted to provocation of Parliament. They provoked Parliament. The Parliament and the Article 122 has contempt power. Just as the, the Superior Court of Judicature also has contempt powers. Now, what the five justices did yesterday amounted to contempt of court. And Parliament can hold them before the court. You mean, so, uh, what uh, uh, the Supreme Court uh, did yesterday was needless. It has created a situation of constitutional lawlessness. Which is in nobody's interest. The, the speaker can refuse to comply with the directive. And in any case, the, 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 the directive to parliament that they should recognize and allow is a purpose. It's, I mean, it, 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 it's meaningless. Directing parliament to recognize the Supreme Court has no business directing Parliament as to what to do. Under Article 110, Parliament can, you know, have the, the sole authority to regulate its internal you know, procedures. 
then, then the question arises as to whether the Supreme Court can import its people decisions and not They cannot be enforced. The ruling of the speaker did not contain any executable for them. And therefore, what the Supreme Court did yesterday was trying to you know, find a solution in search of a problem. There was no problem before them. And yet, they, 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 they nakedly, they nakedly usurped the, uh, the, the constitutional rule of parliament. To me, um, that was unfortunate. So, my take on the matter, what the Supreme Court ought to have done yesterday, realizing that the Honorable Abdenor Martin as applicant in this state, that means we are here for a maximum 10 day statutory period, no more, no less. The, the, in the wisdom of the justice of the Supreme Court, you have none of that. And you gave an unlimited. And the, the young lawyer was led by a former attorney general, the Honorable Jogati. Yes. And therefore, if the Honorable Jogati, in his wisdom, tries to go to situate the issue in context, the Supreme Court justices ought to have listened to them. What they did yesterday was crying beyond the owner of the court. That's what they did yesterday. And therefore, we are heading towards a constitutional showdown when Parliament resumes. And it is needless. At this critical moment, no, none of the bodies, none of the bodies ought to do you know, this sort of thing. And we have a preponderance of authorities in this country indicating that if Parliament does in business, Parliament can start in a business within the, the confines you know, of its constitutional mandate. The judiciary, the Supreme Court has no business in the making. That's exactly what it is. As far as I'm concerned, mm. the, the Supreme Court ruling yesterday you know, amounts to a nullity. It cannot be enforced. It has rather created more problems for the country. The either parliament calls them you know, for contempt of parliament mm. or they should simply refuse to comply with the other which is the knowledge because once it is a knowledge, any directive or decision or order emanating their form is also consequentially null and void. So whatever happened yesterday is null and void. The directive is null and void. Proceeding null and void. So the system, the, the, the special school, as at the time the application was filed, remained. The four, the four MP by constitutional processes have vacated their seat. And the speaker, the, the speaker duly conveyed or communicated the vacancy mm -hmm. to parliament. What business has the Supreme Court? to do in such a situation. What the Supreme Court has done is an affront not only to common sense, but also you know, to the powers and dignity of parliament. As the uh, as the one two two cross state, state you know, cross five state. So as the one two two cross five and state, ground ground validity you know, to um, and intending constitutional slowdown by way of contempt of court. Because Parliament, the, the, the Supreme Court may also wish to enforce a you know, uh, void order. If it is void, it is a case it was never made. That's my mm. position on this issue. Very well articulated. And you say that with all of this and the happenings at the Supreme Court yesterday, it amounts to constitutional lawlessness, despite the, the, the justices adducing some reasons um, to, to their ruling that the applicant edged and they actually appreciated that the said ruling by the speaker will also likely lead to alleged thwarting of government business in parliament and plunge the due management of the affairs of the country into possible disruptions. Further, the subject matter of the suit raises real questions of constitutional interpretation and application of the most fundamental and democratic rights of Ghanaians being the right to be represented 
and head in parliament through their elected representatives. So if this impact order and ruling is allowed to stand, it will render the grave issues raised in the substantive action negatory. That's their argument, the reason why they came to this conclusion. Yes, so if uh, whatever Supreme Court did not get into analysis, it doesn't matter, you know, the rest of the agenda, you know, of uh, the, the, the division. It's the novelty, it's not avoid. They had no business doing what they did. And the procedural lapses, you bring an application against, you know, to uh, respondents. The only, the only way the Supreme Court can look at it or entertain it is when its jurisdiction has been properly invoked. And I'm submitting that the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court was not proper. So there's no point even discussing, you know, the, 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 the ruling in detail. It's a novelty. It is a jury before any court. So for that matter, the Supreme Court, you know, can hear a case. Mm. It must ensure that the principles of effectiveness and submission, which ground a court's jurisdiction, have been fulfilled. No court, no court, you know, can entertain an action when the parties are not, you know, physically present in front, you know, of the of the of the court. No court. Now, if you do that, the proceedings become analysis because. You know, the, the power under which you could have done it, you know, was not uh, vested or conferred upon you. So, presumably, realizing, you know, the, the, the seriousness, you know, of the situation, but the, the, the Supreme Court decided to go into the merits. I am not, you know, I'm not going to consider, you know, whether going to the merit, you know, was right or wrong. Mm. That because fundamentally they have no jurisdiction, the the speaker are not being properly set. You don't under our law, you don't presume the ability of the court process. You don't that you presume, you know, as the, the lawyer said, that the the speaker was aware. That's mm -hmm. you know presumption. Uh, that more harm to the development of our law, than good. Secondly, the Attorney General, who is constitutionally mandated to, to defend all such suits under Article 88, was not there. So mm. the, 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 the speaker is one arm of government, the Attorney General, another arm. So both arms were not there. And the, the authorities we have shown that you have no arms of government who look at their own domain. You know, so the Supreme Court is a good thing. Now, the, 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 one of the reasons the Supreme Court assigned was that uh, the application raises a serious fundamental issue of interpretation. Who said that? What is there to interpret in Article 97, 1, G, and A? There's nothing there to interpret. There, there are no rival constitutional issues arising there from. So it's a straightforward parliament doing its business in accordance you know, with uh, the, the tenet, in accordance with the letter and spirit of you know, the constitution. So you go to Article 93, parliament has its power, you go to Article 97, they know what to do, you go to Article 110, they, you know, they regulate their own procedure, you go to Article 122, if they regulate their procedure and transact their business in accordance with the lay down procedure, the Supreme Court has no business entering in you know, the parliamentary house to scrutinize what parliament did. That is the law. And therefore, what the Supreme Court has done, rather, is to beg a question, create a constitution of constitutional lawlessness, provoke parliament into a banter that is needless. You know? So then, they, they so called, I will show you where Akusombo power lies. Mm -hmm. I mean, and for me, I'm not surprised because the, apart from, uh, let's say, the Chief Justice, uh, Maria Mouzou, and they say, you know, the rest are not the same. In experience, this type of 
constitutional issue ought to have been you know, uh, handled properly. Once it has confronted the Supreme Court, the two justices, you know, had to empanel the most senior justices of the Supreme Court to speak and reassure the nation that where we have reached in a democratic mind, we need the wisdom of very senior and able justices of the Supreme Court. Not judges who are now learning because they were appointed only three months ago. I mean, the, 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 the issues are too large and looming for them. Next time, next time, I urge the chief justice to invite all the justices of the Supreme Court. Mm. Let them sit down and agree who and who are competent to handle such fundamental issues of national importance. The whole world is watching Ghana. The whole world is watching us. We've done it before. We are doing it. We'll do it again. So let us do it properly. Please, let it keep that. Listen to wise counsel. And, and let us stop you know, creating unnecessary tension in this country. For me, my message to both parliaments the judiciary and the executive is that there is time to your job. There is time for everything. Right? So says the scripture. There is time for everything. This is the time. If ever there was any time for the three arms of government to your job, this is the time. The Supreme Court would have invited the speaker and the attorney general to change them to sit down with the five justices and to you know, see how best they can avoid in the situation of constitutional lawlessness. They did not you know they had the opportunity, they you know threw it away. And this is you know raising all of the game questions of the way and manner we are managing our you know developing constitutionalism. Thank you very much. Mr. Kwekwan Sasari I thank you so much uh, for also this intervention and, and coming through. And I know you are still watching, so um, we we'll, we'll definitely will come back to you as and when. But I appreciate you coming in. Thank you thank so you. much. Okay. Thank, thank you. That's Mr. Uh, Kwekwan Sasari. He's a private legal practitioner, the former director of the Ghana School of Law, uh, and also making that intervention in there. And I want to put something on the screen. I'll bring in Lea Martin Pebu. Um, when... Vincent Aftefua, who is the OTAFU Member of Parliament, he's also a private legal practitioner. Um, he was making his point about the agreement, co conclave, between the Speaker and the Chief Justice, as the Speaker referenced when he was delivering his ruling. He, he had indicated that it is an alleged conclave, and I asked a specific question of whether he doubted that there was actually a conclave or agreement between the Speaker and the Chief Justice, and, and whether that was actually still in force or had been invalidated. So this is the, what I was referring to, this, and this is actually on the letterhead of the Judicial Secretary, Office of the Judicial Secretary. It was a secular, which indeed, I think Alexander Fenyomaki himself averted his mind to that he was aware that enforcement of Article 117 and 118 of the Constitution, immunity from service of process and arrest. Mm. It continues. The Honorable Lady Chief Justice's attention has been drawn by the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament to potential breaches by actions of some officers of or some persons acting on behalf of the judicial service of Articles 117 and 118 of the 1992 Constitution. Article 117 and 118 of the 1992 Constitution provides that, quote, civil or criminal processes coming from any court or place out of court or out of parliament shall not be served on or executed in relation to the speaker or a member or the clerk to parliament while he is on his way to attending at or returning from any proceedings of parliament. 118 neither the speaker nor a member of nor the clerk to parliament shall be compelled while attending parliament to appear as a witness in any court or place out of parliament 
Two, the certificate of the speaker that a member or the clerk is attending the proceedings of parliament is conclusive evidence of attendance at parliament, unquote. These provisions ensure that the office holders listed above may not be served any process of court or compelled to appear as a witness in court unless parliament is not in session or the speaker so certifies that the office holder in question is not on his way to attending or returning from any proceedings of parliament. Attention has also been drawn to a circular issued on 22nd February 2021. The Honorable Lady Chief, Chief Justice is informed that there have been attempts to serve court processes on members of parliament, the clerk to parliament and the speaker of parliament, while these office holders are attending to the business of parliament. In view of foregoing, the Honorable Lady Chief Justice has therefore directed that in serving processes to the above mentioned officials, the following should be adhered heareth. One, right honorable speaker of parliament, how service should be effected. All court processes should be served on the legal department of the parliamentary service and also the clerk to parliament, it goes on and on and the details as you have. So, this is the conclave or the, the agreement as was Excellent. But by, by, by the speaker. And I think that it is there in black and white as we as I referenced. Yes. It is still in force as far as we do know. Yes. It hasn't been set aside. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that's why I was making the point that I was telling us if we're that listen, so the Chief Justice having uh, issued such a directive, if you want to step away from it, naturally you would have to have recourse to parliament. What does it take? You call a uh, speaker on phone, this, that, 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 and then quickly maybe they will do some writings. Then dissent his is mind boggling. That's a whole idea. I don't get it. Yes, you may have mm -hmm. powers, but where you are falling over yourselves, you know, running ahead of yourself to exercise the power, you end up giving people opportunity to ascribe ill motives. That's the whole point because the speed was just too much. It's staggering. We had protesters, people, Light. yes, protesters, the uh, anti galamse protesters who were slammed into custody. They got bail more than 48 hours on. The system was too slow. We couldn't get them out. Human beings, where in people number four, we said uh, personal liberties are priceless. We'll put that beyond or above everything else. They couldn't get out. Yet when it came to this matter, within a few hours, because the thing was filed the same yesterday, the same yesterday, even from the timings, it looks like close to or afternoon. And yet, the court was able to sit to adjudicate that. Yet, Oliver and Co., Felicity Amoa, all the, uh, this, uh, Felicity Nelson, Nelson right? All uh, uh, gallant heroes were slammed in there after bail. It took days, days to get them out. So it just, I mean, as, as I've said earlier, reading this, uh, directive, the secular, no, we didn't do ourselves any favors. We've, we are eroding the power of the justice system. We are eroding it. And it's, you know, once you erode that power, once you erode that confidence, it will take a very long time to rebuild because it's been a long time coming. Now it's here with us. It's going to take a long time to build. It's just like the way government just, uh, what do you call it, dismantle the financial system. You remember the DDP mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and bridal borrowing. NDC was warning MPP that, hey, hey, you're over borrowing by 2020. You're over borrowing. Remember by December uh, 2019, the World Bank and IMF report showed that we had the potential of being uh, debt distressed, etc. These people would not listen. They would not listen. When I go and say man pam, then they say, don't use that word. So I'm not using the word man pam, right? But I will say, so you use the word double down. They will double down on their uh, egregious behavior, right? Something is bad. You would sound, the, uh, sound the alarm and they say, no, this is even the time for us to do it more. Uh, is that what the Lumber song? Oh, can you cry? Now me more, more. Oh, can you cry? Now me more, more. Then they... Uh, trust us into that deep crater, the financial crisis. And now we are having the same with our justice system. Oh, well, let's see. I hope, uh, listen, wise people will rise. Yes, this Tuesday matter. Look, don't be surprised. They will send military there. They will but send the military that, there. I can see. But you, they will send the military there. You see, the, um, uh, 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 on the, at the inception of this parliament, yes. that question has still not been answered as to who ordered the military 
to storm power. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not thinking and, we'll be able and, to do that. Like and how, we don't, we still don't know. No, no, and, no role to play. Like, like, if I do that, he care so about law. So by your timidity, but, if I allowed him anywhere else, would have been out in the streets, no, no, like Sri Lanka. No, no, he would have fled, even without his sandals. Like they come in Cuba, told the chiefs that they will flee with their, their sandals. But you are timid. When they say come out and show uh, your anger, you are not willing to. Uh, so you allow them. All of this happened because Ghanaians, you are timid. You see wrong, you don't want to say. You are afraid of dying. If you don't die, you think you will get any rights. The rights are not given on the platter. You have to fight. You are not willing to fight. Okay. You are not willing to fight. Okay. Not willing to fight. Uh, just like the way some Christians will tell you that, oh, Judas is a traitor. This is, I'm like, ah, but you understand your Bible. So if Judas didn't play that role, how would Jesus have died to come and save you? I don't even know why Master. we are here. But in the meantime, please, before you go, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, my uh, flu has reminded me. Auditor General yes, the, Johnson and Seydoux, please, the report on the 52.5 billion that went to GCB, that money from December 2020, you promised that you do a, an audit on it. 52.5 billion. Is there any wonder that later our financial system crashed? We don't know where the money is going. 52.5 billion. You think that's uh, this in chicken change? And we are still here every day. We remind him, and he thinks he can just look. So beyond to, beyond this yeah. this platform of reminding him, what what other avenues can you use to ensure that there's some accountability? If yes, we can sue. We can okay. sue. But now the thing is, I know we've dragged Ufuriata to court. This SML matter, okay. dragged Cecilia Dapa to court, mm -hmm. right? So because of that, usually you want to see one case out oh, before. before. You put in another. Yes, but there will certainly be some. I'm going to go for activists to maybe help. I have to go for a quick break. The rest of the cases. Okay, quick break. I'll be I'll be back shortly after this quick break. I have quite a number of your messages. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Come back to Key Point on TV3. We're live on 3FM 92.7, also on TV3 Ghana on Facebook and DSV channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com and a number of radio stations across the country. Now, stay informed with the latest news updates and exclusive videos by following us on Instagram at 3newsgh. Get breaking stories, code cards, and behind the scenes content all in one place. Don't miss out. Follow at 3 News GH now, at 3 News GH. That is the page on the screen right now. I would urge you to make some time and follow at 3 News GH. Um, a number of your messages, quite a number. I'll do the best to read as many as possible. Um, Theo at Law says, Supreme Court doesn't use CI-47. What is the rule of ex parte in the Supreme Court rule? Is it 10 days or there are no limits? I think you can give a quick answer to that. Yeah, no, they use, they use CI 47. Is there in the rules that, uh, so the Supreme Court, one of the main rules books we use is CI 16. So it provides that when there isn't something in the CI 16, you can have recourse to the other, uh, the rules of the other court. So we use CI 47, all right? Thank yes. you. The ex parte, as I said, usually, it's for 10 days. So it's being copied. So look, let's even start this way. The rules don't say that you can go for stay of execution ex parte. Okay. But practically, we are learning from the matter of the injunction. In the CI 47, is an injunction you may go for ex parte, okay. right? right. Uh -huh. But copy, you know, in the spirit of the law, the ex parte may not be too much of a problem. Even the court has an inherent jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But it's the manner, as we said, Justice not only manifestly ought to be seen to be done, yes. right? right? Right, indeed. I, I, thank you. Um, this one here says, the Supreme Court's decision yesterday has deepened distrust and hopelessness in the Apex Court for aggrieved people to seek justice. I've never been agitated in my spirit and the smell. Mm -hmm. um, as we're saying now, 18th October 2024, 5-0 decision by the Supreme Court to despise Parliament. It says... Uh, We've destroyed nature by our greed with Galamse, and that is one that we must all be worried about. And now, uh, it says, and now nature is determined to destroy our 
pervasive might. I'm sure that's what you say. What the Supreme Court says about the representation of South for four years mm -hmm. or the non-representation yeah. of South. That's yeah, what I'm four years. They, and the case yes. went to it, and they, that's what yes. they said. They said that if the thing will take effect the next four years. I mean, that's yes. the next election. So South had no representation for four years. Okay. That's the same court. Okay. That, that, is this a court that shows well, that it's a case of representation yeah. for uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. I mean, what and is, yet well, you didn't uh, uh, care uh, about yes. a people without uh, representation. When we say, so, sir, we are talking about what? Right. That is the yes. 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 I want to take mm. my In fact, I'll just, I'm just going to, because it's going to be your last, so that, let me just round this a number of, because I owe the viewers as well some some respect on that. Good morning. If Professor Jampo is admitting both speakers were wrong in their ruling where is the supreme court wrong to have corrected the wrong of the speaker eric Quisi taylor thank you um this one here says all right I, this one i cannot read this one here says the ex party motion against the speaker that without speaker or his reps in court the supreme court can't treat the Speaker of Parliament or Parliament as an ordinary entity because it will then go against the Constitution, which has already indicated separation of powers. Papa Bishu, thank you very much. Um, this one also here says, Alfred, if you can ask the MPP person in studio, I'm talking, talking, there are two of them, um, if by his response to <clears throat> your question, is he implying that those three independent candidates are campaigning and contesting on behalf of the MPP? This, it says of his obf obf obfuscation is rather some of us confusing. Um, can, you, can you ask him to clear this for us? My question is, on what basis are those independent candidates contesting? Are they not contesting the official MPP candidates in their respective constituencies? Yes. You also have another question. Can we ask Professor Jampo if those three are not contesting against both MPP and NDC mm -hmm. party candidates? If they are, how can they at the same time be part of the parliamentary party. The numbers they have not are changed. No, but it goes the beyond numbers, that. The no, prof, it's not to, just about. The idea so, was to prevent yeah. a situation where you would do no, this cause to that. Cause but to you weaken in law when we are interpreting. We are looking changed. at the language. Please, no, uh, it's Mr. not only the language. Mr. Can say yeah. we haven't had the spirit, no opportunity no. to uh, this is read a lot. Please, let's go briefly to it. Listen, Article ninety-seven, clause one. It says a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. Then you come to, uh, let's start with the easier one, H. If he was elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party, that's a Siama. A Siama has filed to contest on the ticket of the MPP. When? Notice when is he poll. going to do that? Ah. In, the, in the coming elections? Yes, but right now, he no, says he has joined. This, no, this, this has happened before. How did he treat it? Okay. Okay. When Joe Osewusu, oh, 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 yeah. we had the case of Joe uh, Osewusu. Yeah. How did he treat him? No, but it depends. If Joe people Osewusu, didn't watch, you if people and didn't bring it up, said Ajay then, Ban, then let's go. Said if we didn't, it's different. Then let's go to G. If he leaves the party of which he was a member, at the time of his election to parliament, to join another party, huh? Yes. Or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member. So he has you know, left. You know, okay, the, thank uh, you. No, so, I, so, I want to, so, I, I, I want to jump in. Yes, I'm saying, yes, I'm saying, yes, I'm saying no, this question. Yes, 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 because yes, because, yes, because yes, of what let, Lawyer if, Pebu has just read and what pro, the argument Prof is making. I mean, let's all just calm down and try to answer this question. Assuming mm. in 2025, mm -hmm. an NDC member of parliament mm -hmm. announces in February, January 2025, after being sworn in mm -hmm. that I am leaving the NDC mm -hmm. and so I will join the NPP. Why are you saying he did that? I'm coming, I'm coming. Good, mm -hmm. good. That is the point. That's he says that, that he announces that he announces that I will join the NDs and the NPP in the next election. Okay. Does it mean in the next in election? the next election? Does it mean mm -hmm. that the country will permit him to stay in parliament? Until he joins the NPP yeah, in 2028. Yeah, but the law, the law was so. I mean, is that is that the is that the intention? Okay. You, you is that, a question. Uh, the question I'm asking is, MP, is: Do you think? think no, 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 do you think it's never? Let me finish the question. Let me finish the question. Let me finish the question. Let me finish. Go ahead. Is the intention? Do you think that we will be meeting the intention of the law if we say that? Oh, 
I am going to join NPP in the next election. Ten years but for now, Ten I know I'm no longer a member yes. of the NDC, mm -hmm. even though I was elected into parliament on the basis of being an NDC candidate. Thank you. Question. Will I be allowed answer, answer, to answer, serve answer, the four answer, years? Answer, Should answer, I be answer. allowed? No, 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 the point no. is this. Now, Prof. I am an MPP member of parliament. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And then I announce yes. that in the next ten years, yes, I would want to contest on the uh, no on the ticket of the NEC. Yes. How does that invalidate my functioning? How does that and weaken you and you the actually of, and you oh, actually oh, okay. take steps in this case? You actually take steps. You see to you to, see, to to to, to the, show membership in the because you see you okay, see the, the, bro, 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 let me just you, let me explain to you the point I'm making. So, so, so let me explain to you the point I'm making with that question. Yes, Alfred. Let me explain to you. I'll come to you substantively. I'll come to you substantively. In the narration of the historical antecedent that led to this law, you realize that through the machinations and intimidations of the CPP that led to the cross carpeting, the numbers of the opposition got reduced yes but okay. if you look at the current okay. language but in the, the current no 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 the law so, but in the, the current the living organism in the current circumstances we don't do that when somebody okay. Okay. Them, somebody Thank says you. that i am when Thank somebody you. says that yes. i intend to contest mm -hmm. on another political party's ticket how does that reduce okay. the 137 137 plus the one independent. It, it doesn't okay. do anything to the number. Do you know what so goes so into the, the, the meetings and the negotiations? At, the with meetings and intention. negotiations what, what that go on. Don't you so have, for all intents and purposes, he has left. Can't you have intentions? Thank you. Thank you. No, no, no. So, 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 let me conclude. You have your point. Let me conclude. Gentlemen, I will come to you. 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 Thank you. We have moved from intentions to showing you the pool of the notice of Exactly. Yes. That small in which parliament is he going to? Is he in going the to ninth that? parliament. In, the, in the other parliament, parliament. The German. parliament of the future. In the, yeah, in the, the and there are no indications that the person would even uh, win the election. This no. one. This but one. what is he doing now? This, no once he goes to join, it's what? negotiations. Do you know the things that go behind? So for all intents and purposes, his mind has left his party and joined the other one. And that's what goes on. And that's what goes on. Your microphones are off. But the law grows. Your microphone is off. Uh, yes, this one, Hadi from Big Farm talk? says, I'm sorry. sorry. When it came to judge equation and cases, the people did not deserve representation. But in the ruling of the Speaker declar declaring parliamentary seats vacant, the Supreme Court thinks the people deserve representation. May Allah save Madagana. Hadi from Pig Farm, you say. Um, John Kofi, um, thank you. You are drawing our attention to something to do with uh, uh, the channels going off in Takrade and Naji. Okay, so... We are working on that. So that's just for the notice. Um, those who cannot view us in Takradi and Naji, it's been worked on. Um, Vincent Asefua, he says, okay, so he's off now, but he says, but about understanding the law and being able to research it is one ability you cannot take away from Martin Pebble. He has contributed to the legal jurisprudence in this country and we don't give him enough of his flowers. Pebble number one, two, three, and four, is an authority in legal education in this country. Kudos to him. And I have not means words on this, <laughs> even though he's very... Yeah, it's the Supreme Court. Modest. They are shaping the law. They want Thank to you. take us to the yeah. first we'll, we'll, class. We'll be back, we'll be back yeah, after. I, 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 I need to go for a quick break. Yes, I'll, I'll go for a quick break. A, a quick, it's a quick one, a quick one. So we conclude. Quick one, stay with us. Quick. We'll be back. Welcome back to Key Point on TV3. We're live on 3FM 92.7, also on TV3 Ghana on Facebook and on DSTV channel 279. We're all across the world on 3news.com. There are very many ways that you can connect with us. And at this moment, let me tell you that I am clothed today by Cogra Clothing, the best version of you. Locate them on the Spintex Road and 18 Junction, opposite the Allied Oil Filling Station, Grand Floor, same building with the Ghana Made Store. Call Cogra Clothing for this and more on 0244-238-341. On WhatsApp, 0500-9099. Choose Cogra Clothing, choose right. That's 0244 And 
I need to acknowledge the 4,623 of your messages that have come through. I thank you very much for all your thoughts and views uh, expressed on this uh, matter. Thank you. Uh, Alassane Sweeney, while we round up on this matter, uh, Kizito from Tema East says, no wonder we have to continue to question our democracy so that we can grow it. Mm -hmm. It is important that we all speak up at this time and speak up through the right channels and defying all the odds. Silence is not an option, you mm -hmm. say. Thank you very much. Alassane Sweeney. Yes, you see, Alfred, uh, on Prof's uh, questions, you see, by the Constitution, everyone or every citizen has a right to join a political party. And my stress is on the article A, a political party. So you are not allowed to join two different political parties at the same time. At the same time. We are all allowed to join a political party. So you cannot join a political party based on the Constitution and move from being a member. Can I finish, Prof? Please, can I finish, please, please, Prof? If you, you interrupt my chain of thoughts, thank you. You cannot join a political party based on the Constitution and then uh, move from being a member to entering into a contract with a group of people in a constituency to represent them in Parliament on the ticket of a political party. Remember that your, 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 your chance to be in parliament is a contract that you enter into with the people that you want to represent. And the people vote you into parliament to represent them based on the ideals of the party that you claim to belong to. Now you get to parliament and then you decide to serve another party's interest. One, because you cannot, by constitution, belong to two different political parties, you would have been going against the constitution. And two, because you also have a contract with the people who voted you, mm -hmm. based on your affiliation to a particular political party, if you go and begin to work with another political party, or show your intention to collaborate with another political party, you would have been betraying that, the trust that the people uh, you know, put in you. And that, again, you know, must matter. It is not just about numbers. Mm -hmm. Your argument of numbers is true and important. Okay. But it is also about the relationship and the contract. You gave me three minutes, right. Alfred. So it is important that we get this clear. Okay. That once you go into parliament in 2025 and you show by conduct and by deed that you no longer belong to the party that brought you to, to parliament, mm -hmm. you cannot continue to be in parliament even if your claim is that your conduct and your intentions will manifest in 2028. Okay. It, it, especially in this case, where we have shown proof that these people, in the case of the independent candidate, has joined the NPP. Because if you are not a member of the NPP, you cannot fail to be its candidate. That is according to their party's uh, constitution. Apart from that, the other members have also failed to be independent candidates. And that is where H kicks in. To catch them there. Apart from that, look, when you look at 97, the sub clauses, there are some automaticity to some of the you know, uh, 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 provisions under 97H. For example, when parliament is dissolved, mm -hmm. are you going to wait for anybody to write to you that you are no longer a member of parliament? No. If you write to the speaker to say you are resigning, are you going to wait for parliament to write to you to accept your resignation before you are no longer a member of parliament? It is the same thing with G and H, where it says that when you join a political party, either than the one that brought you to parliament, you are no longer a member of parliament. You don't need a committee to sit on this. It, that automaticity, that automaticity kicks in. Again, when you are an independent member and you join a political party like the independent member has done, you don't need a committee to sit on this. And the Supreme Court says that they are, base, they are basing their, their, their actions on fair representation. Look, Mama Yerga said it earlier. The Constitution itself anticipates where people will not be represented. And that is why, under Article 1126, it says that three months to an election, if there is a vacancy, there will be no by-election. Okay. Within that three-month period, does it mean that it is unfair for the people of that constituency not to be represented. Quite apart from that, you look at Article 1102 
of the 1992 constitution again and it says that parliament may act notwithstanding a vacancy in its membership parliament may act notwithstanding a vacancy in its membership so let not the supreme court be fooled by right. some people in, 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 in government okay. that if they do not do that, parliament work will suffer. Parliament will up. work whether those people are there or not. Okay. But three. again, I just want to conclude on the note that it is beginning to be glaringly, you know, uh, the Supreme Court is beginning to be glaringly biased. And that is dangerous for their image and dangerous for our democracy. In the case of Jackie Quaison, all the cases no, of Jackie well Quaison, in the case of the E-Levy, in the case of uh, election of second deputy speaker, the Supreme Court moved with alacrity to determine the, the cases in favor of the executive. But in the case of the same E-Levy by the minority leadership, in the case of uh, 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 many other cases, the LGBTQ and others, where members of the minority have interest in and have okay, filed you. before the Supreme Court, we you, do not you, see you, you, the you same speed being exhibited. Uh, and that uh, must uh, be checked so, let me bring in to Dr. protect Pagre the Pagre image Pagre. of the judiciary uh, and also to strengthen our democracy. To you, that in the in the in the no 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 yes no 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 to you it says. In the spirit of being principled in our politics, I says I've respected Dr. Parkway, but it Dunquist's consistency in even speaking the truth when it is against his government. Really? This morning, yeah, you haven't been listening he says, to no, this, this is somebody uh -huh. reading okay. a message. I'm Can just reading a message. Morning. It says this morning okay, um, he sought to disappoint. <laughs> this morning he sought to disappoint me. Yeah. Uh, he's not alone if he agrees that Speaker Michael Quay was wrong. And it will not change his color. It is just about being principled as a human being. Dr. Boachie Dankwa. Alfred, all I said was that I don't want to give a position on Speaker Michael Quay's statement. That's all I said. It doesn't mean I but agree. But I asked the question. It doesn't mean I disagree. I asked a question. Um, so are you saying you're not going to answer the no, question? No. <laughs> I mean, Alfred, you see, that's why I said, I mean, all I said was I don't want to give a position on Speaker Michael Quay's statement. No, but I, I, I believe in your to, intellect. Would, That's would, why I was would, asking you no, the question course, whether, I would, whether I would you agree that want to, he, I would want he, you he was to, wrong. I would want you to hold on, on to that. But really to state that, I've just, I have a question and then I have an answer as well to the question. In this country, we don't run parliamentary supremacy. Neither, neither does parliament withhold all the rights. What we run is constitutional supremacy in this country. And so really, for me, what would take place on Tuesday is that the majority in parliament, led by the majority leader, the Honorable Afenyo Makin, will lead the side of the house to sit at the majority side, whilst the minority, led by Ato Forsen, will sit at the minority side. Because we run a constitutional supremacy in this country, not a parliamentary supremacy. And those will be my concluding remarks. I have to go for a quick break again. I have to go for a quick break. Gentlemen, please. 30 seconds. I'll be back. <laughs> Lawyer Martin Pebble. Oh, uh, the, the, no, you asked, you asked just a minute on it. It says, do articles 97G and H need interpretation or it is a provision when breached? Its application is automatic and not subject to any interpretation. One minute. Yeah, I think, look, 90... Uh, seven, one, G and H, they are clear enough. They are clear enough. And that's how come even the uh, standing orders of parliament, right? Okay. It says that the speaker is just to inform the house on the vacancies. Listen. So it says, uh, I'm reading uh, this uh, uh, 18. 18 says, the speaker shall inform the house of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member of parliament under clause one, um, 1B to E, G and H of Article 97 of the Constitution. Okay. So you see, it, it says that the Speaker should inform. So it means that the lawmaker themselves, or the lawmakers themselves, intended that this would be simple and this would be applied. I mean, I don't see anything that's rocket science about this provision. It's okay. so clear. Right. Look, if he was elected, the H, a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party. Are you saying a CMS documents at the EC on the ticket of the MPP are false? The notice okay. of poll is false? 
Thank and you. then you come to uh, Kujia Santi, the others. Are they not going independent? So the gene. Thank Has you. he not left the party? Kujua Santi and Ku. The documents are the easy. Are they for a joke? Thank you, Council. And Simon, um, who's a senior parliamentary um, journalist, in fact, uh, known him as Fabaka 2008, says, Good morning. Please, the speaker in his statement indicated that on the EC's notice of polls, these four individual names have been captured clearly that they are contesting the elections as independent candidates rather than the party that brought them to parliament as MPs. So the EC's notice of polls is the evidence and the speaker doesn't need to wait mm. for any political party yeah. to write to him. Yeah. Thank you. Professor Jampo. Um, if I have a little time. So I just Eight, wanted to respond to... Um, my brother by saying that a member of parliament does not represent only his political party um, in a constituency all right and so um if you have voted on the ticket of the mpp right and and you become an mpp member of parliament you don't serve the interest of only the mpp that's why it is wrong for us to describe president Akufuado, for instance as mpp president he is our president okay if he becomes an mp mm -hmm. in the area he is the mp for the area regardless of the fact that the Polka party sent him there. And the other bit is for us to appreciate the fact that, um, you see, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are doing the same thing that I didn't want me to do. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So you sorry, see, Mark, in 2008, Joe Osei Wusu, Ofori Kuragu, Set Ajeba, they go to, they got to parliament as independent candidates. Right. Now, in 2012, when they wanted to go again on the ticket of the MPP, their seats were not declared vacant because the because the speakers there knew the real meaning of of of, of this provision, uh, this um, uh, legal provision that we are talking about. Thank and you. so my view is that the law has everything to do with the functioning of members of parliament in the now, and mm -hmm. not a declaration of their intent. But the last thing that I want to say. Is to address my people by saying that, dear my dear UTAC members, you have shown resilience. Your chapter. You have you shown you have shown resilience, and you have demonstrated that you are the true conscience of the nation, despite attempts, despite very flawed and infantile attempts to break our ranks. Mm. You have been resolute. You have been resilient. You have stayed true to the fight against irresponsible mining. We are still on strike until the National Executive Committee of UTAG, you know, decides otherwise. So I wish you well, Aluta Continua. Professor Ransford Jampo is the president of the University of Ghana, UTAG, and also a professor of political okay, science. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, lawyer Martin okay, Kwebu, appreciate you discussion. coming. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Pagri Bachidangwa, thank you so much for coming. Al-Hajj, Al-Hassan, Suhini, appreciate you. Thank you so much. And also want to appreciate... Uh, Mr. Uh, gentlemen, we are, we are done. 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 My name Alfred Okanse. On behalf of the rest of the team, have a great, great weekend and all the best.